Hey everyone, Mr. Kaczynski here working through section double B of IXL's Algebra 1 skills. I've got matching quadratic functions and their graphs today. Um, I haven't talked a lot about the graphs. Well, we have. We've done transformations and things of that nature. So I think when I look at something like this, the first thing I would notice is this negative sign right here. And if the lead coefficient of a quadratic is negative, that means it's been reflected, okay? So it's no longer pointing up the parabola. When I say it, it's pointing down. So that negative sign right there indicates these, this quadratic is pointing down. That's the first thing I would use to um, differentiate between these two. So this one goes over here, all right? There's other things as well, uh, but that's definitely the first thing I would use to differentiate between the two. All right, well, that doesn't help us on the second example. They're both negative. They both have a lead coefficient that's negative, and they're both pointing down. But there are some other things that might help us. I might point to the y-intercept right here of negative 3, okay, as opposed to uh, a y-intercept of negative 128, which is going to show up way down there, okay? So that's enough um, to let us differentiate between these two. That This one is the negative x squared minus 3, and this one's the negative 2x squared plus 32x minus 128. So y-intercepts, huge thing too. Another thing on this one that might help differentiate is this 8 right here. So ISL does give us a lot of help on this skill in that they... Um, put it in factored form for us, the negative 2 times x minus 8 squared. And that 8 we know is a translation 8 units to the right. All right, and there's that vertex with the 8. So that might help us on other problems too. And then a third thing is this negative 2. That's a vertical stretch. So as opposed to down 1, right 1, this one actually goes down 2 right one before it hits another point. All right, so that idea of vertical stretch might help us too. All of these things are definitely gonna help us as these problems get tougher. All right, so neither one of these have been reflected, but they do give us um, these, um, these graphs in, or these equations in factored form. And right there using the zero product property, I can tell that its x-intercepts are four and seven. Four, and 7, okay, as opposed to this one whose x-intercepts are 0 and negative 5, 0 and negative 5. All right, so that's going to help me in differentiating between these two. Um, so g of x had the x-intercepts at 0 and negative 5, f of x had the x-intercepts at um, 4 and 7. Also, you know, just y-intercepts. This has got a plus zero with it. And there's our zero right there for our y-intercept. This one's got a y-intercept of 28, uh, which is going to be way up here. Okay, it's eventually going to hit at 28. That's about the worst parabola or continuation of a parabola anybody's ever made. I'll change the page quickly. All right, and then as they get even tougher, they give you more graphs. But again, we can differentiate between these. The first ones I look for are the negatives, all right? So I've got two that are pointing uh, down, all right? So that's either f of x or um, h of x. You know, h of x, I, I think I'd look at it as its y-intercept is negative 3, which is this one right here, negative 3. So that's going to be h of x. All right, and then the other one has got to be um, f of x. Also notice that it's got a um, vertical stretch of negative 2, and it's got only one y-intercept, positive 5. Okay, down 2 over 1, okay? So it's got those different indicators that match up with it as well. So the other ones are positive. That means their parabolas are pointing up. So what can we use there? Well, we could use this y-intercept of plus 2, which is right here. And this one's got a y-intercept of positive 4, which is right there. So those would be good enough um, to distinguish. 
You can also see that this one's a perfect square trinomial. Um, so it's got only one y-intercept at uh, negative two. So all of those things will help us differentiate. So uh, h of x, I'm sorry, which one? g of x is the one with the y-intercept of positive two, and k of x, the one with the y-intercept of, of four. All right, so I think I've hit on a lot of different things that'll help you with this. Um, y-intercepts, vertical stretches, um, x-intercepts, um, things of that nature. So let me know how it goes uh, in the comments. And if there's other things that you see that maybe I should add to this video, you can let me know that as well. Good luck.